Hey, what's up guys? I'm Praetorian and welcome back to Crusader Kings 3 as we are playing with Emperor Adam II of the... I guess we're going to keep it the current name because I haven't seen your guys' comments of that last episode just yet. Uh, so he's the current Emperor of Britain. I would like to open it up with uh, looking at the Dynasty Tree just because we've had so many people ask about it. So I feel like it would be uh, suitable to kind of look how things have gone. Uh, so of course we have King William here. That's who we started with. And uh, Prince uh, Robert II didn't have any kids of his own. And then, of course, we had King Richard. Uh, but let's move to some of the other dynasty members and see what exactly happened here. Uh, so Cecilia, uh, she married into uh, this. Uh, I think this was the Italian dynasty. And uh, that was not matrilineal, so those are not of our dynasty. Uh, of course, we also had her here. That was maybe the Holy Roman Empire one, perhaps? Yeah, I think that might be the case. And then this one was into... Uh, into Scandinavia. And so as far as like members of our dynasty here, I uh, kind of see that a lot of these, uh, obviously the, the AI doesn't do matrilineal marriages, so all the, all the daughters are the end of the dynasty. And then we come down to here, and it looks like this is the, the current uh, end of that line, that the male line. Now, if he doesn't have any kids, which he is... Oh, well, it looks like that got moved below it, unfortunately. There we go. Uh, he is quick. Uh, he does currently have a spouse. She's not pregnant yet, uh, but hopefully they'll have kids and that line will continue. Uh, he's set to inherit several counties right now, but overall that line wasn't all that successful. Uh, nothing over here. This, this line did end as well. Uh, so the main line is really the only one that's continued going, the one under Richard. Now, of course, King Richard had several uh, children of his own, and I think... All of his daughters but one, he had matrilineal marriages. So, of course, that uh, spread the dynasty even further. Uh, so, with Beatrice here, this was the marriage uh, This was the marriage that we had here in England. And so, we have Duke Geoffrey, of course, and then Duke Roger down here. Uh, they're all of our dynasty. Of course, King Hugh was technically of our dynasty. He was a bastard. He's now the, the king of Jerusalem. Uh, so, he's down this line here. So that'll be the last member of that dynasty, uh, of our dynasty, I mean, uh, down this line. And then um, we have a couple members here as well, which seem to not have had any kids just yet. Oh, and then this line here is in fact going to be combining these two duchies. Because he currently has a duchy. And then he's going to be getting this one from... Now, uh, that might not end up happening, because if he has any kids, then they would uh, inherit it. But if, if Duke Roger dies... Then he'll get uh, the Duchy of East Anglia. He'll have two duchies. Okay, interesting. Then we have Lord Lionel. Uh, he's currently heir to his duchy if he was to die, since he doesn't have any kids just yet. Okay, so that's uh, that line of the dynasty, uh, Beatrice's line. Uh, of course, we have uh, Queen Matilda. Uh, so I want to say, I don't remember exactly who we married her to. Okay, so this was the one that where she was married to uh, Alfonso, uh, of course, in all his lands in, in uh, Iberia and France. And from what I'm seeing here, there's, there appears to be three male lines right now going down here. Uh, of course, you have Alfonso. He's the king and holds all those titles. You have his younger brother, which, again, I'm not entirely sure why he didn't get any titles at all, but yeah, he didn't get anything. Uh, then the last one is, is King Peter here who got the Kingdom of Castile. Uh, so that's that line, the Iberian-French line. And of course we have uh, King Adam here, and then King Richard, or excuse me, Prince Richard II here. Uh, he has several males to continue his line. Uh, we've already seen them down on the other side, because these two lines merged, Prince Richard II's and uh, Princess Beatrice. Uh, clearly there was a marriage between cousins there, because uh, their line has, has merged. Uh, so that's just one line essentially because uh, I think they're all I think all of those were over there yeah both of these are so yeah they, they those two lines have merged uh, and then we have uh, King Adam uh, so King Adam's line let's just see what happened here of course Ailey uh, she had her kids uh, who was she married to again okay so this was in France and so there these are their children they'll be inheriting uh, southern France and then we have Elizabeth doesn't look like things have gone well for Elizabeth. No, absolutely not. Things have not gone well for her. 
Uh, she hasn't really gotten anything. Uh, but she does have a son, one son to continue the dynasty. And then we have uh, the petty king George here, who is, of course, in Italy. Joan was the Italian branch. Okay, and then, of course, we have Emperor Adam. So that is our current uh, dynasty, guys. So what we're doing here now, guys, I, I mentioned that I want to declare war on them. I do. I want to get the Kingdom of France underneath uh, our emperor title. Uh, so that would, of course, be with Duke Roger here becoming the King of France. I do want to do that. Uh, I feel like we should raise our total troop numbers up first, and there's a few issues that I've got to get dealt with. We have far too many of our vassals right now that are not of our religion. So we're gonna demand all their conversions and this will potentially result in us having some rebellions that we'll have to deal with. We'll see what they ask for. Uh, we'll talk to Duke Roger first and demand it from him. We'll do it one at a time, guys. I think this is the best way to do it. But I think Adam is really right now concentrated on getting everybody following the Catholic faith here. Uh, so with him, I think with him, we actually will be willing to uh, pay him this money. Uh, you know, again, we're arbitrary, so we can kind of do this however we want. We can kind of have our own arbitrarily set uh, standards for who we are willing to pay. Uh, and with Duke Roger, because, of course, we're trying to make him the king of France, uh, we will pay him. Uh, so he's going to convert to Catholicism. And so now we can move to the next one, uh, which I think should be Mercia. Yeah. Uh, by the way, sometimes you'll you'll notice that I, I call characters based on their title. So I'll call her Mercia, or I'll call him East Anglia. I, I try not to do that because people don't you know, people get confused by that. Uh, but as far as like the way we look at things in in history, uh, we we do call them by their titles, not typically by their names. That can be incredibly confusing for many people as well. When I do like lectures and stuff, back when I used to like help teach classes uh, when I was in college after I had. After I'd already graduated, it took a little while before I left. Uh, I was thinking about doing my graduate degree there, but then yeah, a lot of things happened. But the point was I did help teach some classes, and I remember that causing a lot of confusion for people, uh, you know, calling the characters, the people, historical people by their title names. People found that super confusing. So I try not to do that. Uh, but yeah, if you notice I do, that's, that's the reason why. Typically we do call people by their titles. Uh, so you'd be called, you know, a duke or a count, they'd be called Essex or, or Somerset. Uh, we'd call them that rather than their their actual names. Uh, so let's go ahead and demand her conversion next. So far they've all been willing to, if I pay them. Uh, except, oh, this is the first character that won't. She will not be swayed. All right, so we can arrest her now. And uh, we're we at the point where yeah, we're just like demanding. Everybody has to. They don't have a choice in this matter. Uh, so we're not even looking to revoke her titles. It's not even really what our purpose here is. So we're just going to try and get her converted. So we have a 100% chance to succeed. I'm actually surprised at just how well we're able to do it because they're terrified of us. That's why. Okay. Now we've been able to, to imprison people really easily. Now we'll go ahead and imprison her. Uh, and... Okay, looks like we successfully imprisoned her and we got called into another damn conflict uh, over here in Ireland. This is a this is an offensive war, so she's looking to attack her. I think we established this was her uncle, right? So she's going to attack her uncle here in order to uh, get both of the duchy titles here, which is great because we're going to inherit both of those. Uh, you know, obviously our our son will. Well, maybe not. In fact, her other son might end up inheriting one of these duchy titles. Now that I think about it, uh, yeah. Uh, one of our other sons would likely inherit that, but but whatever. The point is, uh, we will be supporting this conflict. I don't know how she'll do, uh, but yeah, the, just obviously the fame penalty is one thing we always have to consider now. It's going to be much more difficult to uh, uh, turn down uh, these these wars now. Uh, before it was just so easy. I feel like it's good that they adjusted it. It was just way too easy to, to turn them down. Uh, so the new Earl Aubrey of Bedford... Uh, he is very good at diplomacy. He's actually better than this Duke here. And this is our rival. I don't know that we'd give our rival a position, would we? Arbitrary character? I don't think we would. I think we'd push him right out of the council. Yeah, I don't think he deserves a position. And he sucks at everything anyway, uh, except for the chancellorship, which he's just okay at. You know, we've always been rivals with these, these Bedford characters. Not this time. This time we're going to have a friend over here. Maybe. We'll try. We'll try and improve it. Uh, we do still need a marshal. And let's take a look at our, our other characters and see what they're they're decent at. 
I suppose we'll keep uh, Duke Roger. Uh, it would be wise to keep him in a position. And then we have the Duchess of Brittany over here as our steward, and she's pretty darn good at that. So, yeah, I think we're to keep everything as is, with the exception of, of course, we need to we need to hire a new marshal. And we could just make this knight our marshal. He's pretty decent. Yeah, he's really good. I, I suppose we'll make him the marshal. Yeah. Okay. So we'll have him continue to train commanders. Although I am tempted to have him do this so we can get these numbers built up faster. Actually, you know what? Let's go ahead and do that. Let's get the, the numbers uh, here. I've been trying to get that done. So I think it would be wise to, to build that up quicker. Let's take a look at the conflict and see if we actually need to help. We'll, we'll accept it, but that doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to assist in it. Uh, I don't even know if it'll be necessary at all. We might need to, uh, considering the fact that you know we have 12,000 of that. So she only has 2,000. He has 1,200 uh, total. That includes his ally. I don't know if he'll need our assistance or not. It looks like probably not, or whether she will need our assistance. I don't think so, so we're not gonna send soldiers over there. So, we arrested her, and thus now we can force her to convert. But she hates us, of course, so that's something to consider. I don't think he really cares if anybody hates him, though. With her, I think we're just going to go and negotiate her release, demand her conversion. She has no choice here. And then maybe, well, we can't get a weak hook on top of that. So that's unfortunate. Is her, uh, oh, who is her heir? Yeah, she hasn't had any kids. She's older. She's not going to have any kids. It looks like her father is set to, to inherit, and he's also lowered. Uh, okay. So this might just be a temporary fix, because yeah, they can't have any children. I must just want to go ahead and, and take her entire... Yeah, I think it would be best to just take and, and you know take her titles and give it to a good good Catholic. And yeah, I think that's exactly what we're going to do. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, take her titles. Revoke her Duchess of... Uh, the Duchy of Mercy a title. So yeah, we're going to take that. And... Give it to somebody who's more deserving. We could also, in fact, let... Hmm. You know, we could actually let one of our sons uh, take the, the Mercia title. See, I think we'll give up the the Duchy of Northumbria title. I think that'd be better. And then Mercia can go to one of our sons. So with this title here, that would result in them taking that county. Uh, there's a lot of different options. One thing I wanted to, to take a look at, yeah, Earl Henry. We've been talking about rewarding Earl Henry for a while. And I think that's exactly what we're going to do. I think we're going to reward him with this this title here. Uh, yeah, I think that'd be quite fitting. Uh, he's He served us well for a long time. He's an older man. Uh, he has a, a son and heir. Uh, I'm trying to look at him. Yeah, he has a son and heir. He's a good Catholic as well. They're both good Catholics. And uh, I think that he's a, a very good choice here, actually. Uh, so, yeah, let's go ahead and grant him this title. Uh, yeah, I think that would be for the best. Uh, we could also give him... Uh, given his... I don't think his county is currently... I don't think that county is in Northumbria, but that's okay. That's fine. Uh, we're going to go to give it to him anyways. Uh, so we're going to give him the Petty Kingdom of Northumbria with the one earldom that we have there. Uh, he's going to like us quite a bit. Uh, it'll be... Very loyal to us for a time at least. We could also give it to his, his son as reward. You know what? I almost want to give it to his... I think we're going to give it to his son. As like, like this is the reward. We're rewarding you by granting titles to your son. Yeah, I think we're going to do that, guys. I think that'd be better. Uh, so let's go and give him the duchy title. If I can find it here. I thought it was here, here at the top. Oh, here we go. All right, so yeah, we're going to grant him uh, the titles. That's the way we'll reward Earl Henry. He did a good job as our knight, sir. So we are above our domain limit by one. So we still have to grant another title out. Uh, so this title here, uh, we might just, yeah, I think we might just give up one of the counties here. Like the, the least useful one. Yeah, I think it'll be this one here. So yeah, we'll just give up a, a county. Yeah, I don't see anything else to, to do. So yeah, we'll grant this off. I was going to give uh, Northumbria to this knight here. I'd like to have him be a powerful vassal, but yeah, I don't know that we'll be able to do that. Maybe we'll wait to reward him with a title. Yeah, I think we're going to wait. Uh, we might be able to get a better title than this one. Uh, so let's just find another character that'd be a good choice here. So I think we're going to grant it to this character here. Uh, he's got a decent opinion of us. He's intimidated by us. Uh, he's zealous. Uh, and most importantly, he's a giant. 
He's a giant, and he's set to inherit the title right next to it. Uh, he's set to inherit that earldom. So, yeah, his, his two titles would be right next to each other, his two counties. And he's a giant, so, you know, we're always trying to spread the, the giants around our realm, so we'll grant the title to him, guys. That'll get us back underneath that domain limit. All right, fantastic. So we've taken her title. Uh, let's go ahead and go through our prisoners. We have a lot, again, that we have to go through. Obviously, we took all her titles here. Uh, I think she probably paid for... Yeah, she probably paid for it, but... Do we want to just release her? Uh, let's just see what she's willing to do here. Will she convert now? She will. That's all I really wanted from her. All right, so we'll just uh, demand that she convert now. Let's we'll see what happens from that. Uh, so we'll go ahead and contact her regarding that. Uh, obviously, we still have the Duchess here in our uh, in our prison. And she's going to hate us for a long time. We're also rivals with her. Uh, we are really starting to increase our number of rivals, aren't we? We have four total rivals. Uh, and, of course, yeah, they're mostly people who we, we've taken titles from. Uh, so... Really pissing off her vassals, doing a good job with that, I guess, if that's the goal here. Uh, we have this guy in our prison. I don't remember what we were doing with him. We're waiting until he got a little bit more money. So we're going to wait on that. Uh, we'll see if anybody else has any money uh, for us. Just kind of go through these. Our, our prisons are just st just stacked full of people. Just the way that Adam likes it. All right, yeah, 132 gold here. We still have her in the prison as well. Uh, so she's been in there for a while. Let's finally let this this countess out. Uh, I know that's not anywhere near uh, how much money we could get. It's close enough, guys. Uh, so we'll go ahead and, and, and let her out. Uh, and uh, as far as her, yeah, I don't think we'll let her out. All right, so we'll leave that one person out. It's the limits of our kindness today. All right, so we've done that. Is there any other vassals left uh, that we need to force to convert? Uh, you know what? Let's actually just we'll just go through our list of vassals here and uh, figure out if there's anybody else who who needs to be uh, talked to about their current faith. Uh, it doesn't look like you can see faith in here. All right, well, that's kind of a bummer. Yeah, that would have been the best way to to do this. You can see faith in here though. Yeah, but this doesn't show the vassals. Uh, so yeah, that's a, that's a real shame. They don't show show you the faith in here. Maybe I'm just looking at it. No, no, I'm not seeing any faith anywhere. All right, so that's kind of a shame. Can we see faith if we go through our vassals here? No. Okay, so there's no way to, to look at it that way. We're just going to have to, to click on each one of them. All right, so we'll just go through them and see if anybody else needs to be forced to convert that isn't already in the prison. And we're just going through the most powerful ones first. Uh, this guy. Let's demand his conversion. So we'll demand that he converts, and that might be all that we go through here, guys. Because that's all I really care about is these higher ranking ones. Uh, we have another Earl Henry. This is not the Earl Henry that has done a good job serving us. Let's go and demand his conversion. Let's we'll see if he uh, agrees or not. He'll probably require that we pay him money. Uh, this Duchess, she's good Catholic. All right, so it looks like we're good to go. Uh, so I think we did a good job converting most of our, our main powerful vassals. And let's we'll see what happens here with our dog. Uh, so he is not willing. Uh, so, you know, Emperor Henry is just not willing to accept uh, these <laughs> refusals. We only have a 75% chance of success there. Let's let's see if we uh, if we can get him. Uh, I think we had this this event already, and we're not patient, so we do this one. We try and catch him. And again, I'm not going to help out in this war unless it feels like she needs it. I don't think so, guys. It looks like she'll be just fine. Uh, the ransom accepted, and this Earl here wants 300 gold. Again, I, I feel like we're not willing to do that. Uh, so let's just go ahead and imprison him. Oh, we're still waiting, so we have to wait until we get the response from this one. We were able to imprison him. Excellent. Uh, so now let's go and imprison this character. 100% chance of success there. Ooh, what event do we have here? Unhealthy relations. The entourage of my rival and vassal, the Duke Ethelward, uh, stopped some way away from London. Uh, before I have time to send out an envoy, something is launched from the camp towards my castle. A mangled body, ravaged by disease, falls from the sky, skin marred by rashes and bumps that can be seen even from where I'm standing. It lands with a squelch, spreading blood, intestines, and panic. What the hell? 
All right, so he threw this character at us, which his name is Guy here in English. Yeah, he's English, so his name would be Guy. I think it's like Guy in, in French. He had smallpox, and he is looking quite sickly. <laughs> he looks disgusting. Poor guy. Uh, so this is because this guy is our rival. That's the reason why he did it. Uh, so we have to figure out what we're going to do back. We can scoop him up and launch the body right back. And somebody in our court is going to contract the disease, or has a 40% chance to contract the disease. And he'll become our nemesis if we do this. Uh, we say this body should be studied. Uh, and then we'll get a plus two learning and we'll gain stress because we're arrogant. So we won't be doing that. Uh, higher chance that somebody's going to get the disease. Or we can say he will have a dignified, a dignified burial and we'll gain 50 piety. And we'll also gain stress for that. So I feel like we have to do this one because of the arrogance. Yeah, looks like that's the, the only option for us. So yeah, we'll do this one and it's probably what Adam would do anyways. Yeah, let's go and do that. Smallpox, a killer in our midst. The curse of death has fallen upon my court. A case of smallpox has been discovered. The unfortunate victim is my knight. Oh no. Alright, the taint possessing his flesh is a danger to us all. While he remains uh, afflicted, no life at court is safe. So we can isolate him and pray for redemption. I just feel like Adam would have no qualms with getting rid of this guy. Like, you're just not welcome. Uh, now, this doesn't actually get rid of him. I think he will still be... I think he'll still be in our lands. Oh, maybe not. He went back there. Okay. So yeah, we get rid of him. <laughs> well, uh, this is like uh, uh, this is like biological warfare. We just sent him back to our future enemy, the King of Leon. <laughs> He's gonna be in his court, spreading the disease. Uh, I find after a few minutes of searching, and I think this is supposed to be I find Shadow. After a few minutes of searching, happily wagging his tail and pretending like nothing is wrong, he is clutching something in his mouth, and he gently places. Okay, so we've seen that same event, the two coins. Uh, and we were able to successfully arrest him as well. Okay, so let's go back into the prisoners here and deal with these two counts that refused uh, refused us here. So with the first one, you know, obviously demanding the conversion is the main thing we want to do here. Uh, let's see what claims he has. Okay, just on that earldom. Uh, let's do the, the weak hook. Uh, let me see where these guys are the earls of real quick. All right, so he's got two earldoms. So we could always take one of his titles if we so desired. That's supposed to be part of Mercia. Both of them are part of Mercia. So we could take those those titles. I want to say... I want to say we're not going to take any titles from him. Yeah, I, th I think rather than getting that big old opinion hit because we, we took his titles, let's just demand his conversion. That's already going to be an opinion hit. And then also get a weak hook on him. I think that's the best way to do that. Let's go ahead and negotiate re release. Uh, I told you you were going to convert, man. Uh, so we're going to do the same thing with this character as well. We're just forcing everybody to convert. Because Adam is very much into religion at this moment for some reason. Probably from the crusade. Uh, he very much wants everybody to follow the one true Catholic faith. Alright, so they have both a reed. We now have hooks. Uh, we could either get money for those hooks. Or, of course, we could instead change up their contracts. And I think that might be what we end up doing... We already are getting a lot of money from Earl Henry, or excuse me, a lot of uh, levies from Earl Henry. Maybe we won't. Uh, maybe we'll just get money uh, in this particular case. Yeah, I think with this guy, we'll, we'll just go with the money. Yeah. Uh, how about this character here? Where's he at? He actually has low feudal taxes. Taxes. That's not okay. So yeah, we're gonna change the feudal taxes up. I'm not entirely sure how we got those low feudal taxes, but yeah, let's let's use the hook and uh, modify his contract. All right, and then. With Earl Henry, we're going to demand that payment from him. 300 gold from Earl Henry. All right, excellent. Uh, so is there anything else we need to do here? Yeah, I feel like we've we've dealt with all of our characters that I wanted to deal with. As far as our, our children, uh, they're all set to inherit some, some good titles here. Yeah, we got all that taken care of. One thing we could do is arrange a marriage for our eldest daughter. I've been looking at uh, possible options. There's a couple good options here uh, for matrilineal marriages with the alliance power kind of just spreading our dynasty. Uh, so there's this one in in Hungary here where he's set to inherit the Duchy of Croatia, Croatia, and his older brother who is going to get the 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 top title, the, the Hungarian title. He's already. Uh, a lunatic and he doesn't have any children uh, and likely gonna have trouble his yeah, his wife is barren so what I'm thinking 
is that this would be a very good matrilineal marriage. The kingdom of, of Hungary is is huge. They got a lot of territory here. So that'd be a great fit. Uh, that'd be one option. And then the other option I found is actually here with the, the Croatia, the kingdom of Croatia. Now she is actually um, more the king of Sicily, you know, the two Sicilies here in, in South Italy and, and Sicily, than she is the, the king, of, or I should say queen, uh, queen of Croatia, because she only has this little bit of territory here. And it's funny because her her two sons, they're, they're twins, first of all, so the same age, uh, but I guess the one that pops out first is the one that's considered the oldest. Uh, and he's pure-blooded, so he has some good bonus here. And he is set to inherit the, the, the smaller amount of land because that's the top title. Uh, he's set to get the Kingdom of Croatia, which would just give him uh, the little bit of territory here. There's really not much that she has. It's like a couple counties. That's all he would get there. While his younger brother, who is slow, uh, he uh, is set to inherit uh, Sicily. Uh, it'll be created. The Kingdom of Sicily will be created for for him, so I'm guessing that she has those, uh, uh, she has that one partition law where it creates creates titles, the Confederation, I think, Confederation Partition. I'll take a look at that in a minute because I want to know the name of that. And so, yeah, it'll uh, create the Kingdom of Sicily, so he'll gain all of her titles here. Uh, all of them. So he actually gains a lot more. And she's willing to uh, marry off either one of them in matrilineal marriages. One thing somebody noticed uh, in a, a previous video. Uh, that it seems like all the female rulers don't really care about matrilineal marriage, and they'll, they'll agree to to marry their their heirs off in matrilineal marriages. Uh, all the female characters. Uh, somebody noticed that there, it was always females that were agreeing to these uh, with their primary heir. So they don't seem to care about that. So this would be a good option too. She has a lot of land as well. Uh, again, though, the problem is you either have to marry the, marry the slow character to get the most land, or you know this character and you wouldn't gain as much. So I think the better fit is probably the Hungarians because I think it's a good chance that. Uh, this second son of his will in fact end up inheriting. Uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and do uh, our daughter here. Uh, not the, the bastard daughter that we have, uh, which I, yeah, I guess we can arrange the marriage for her even though she's not in our lands. She's actually still in the lands of our rival up there in Scotland. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna do the matrilineal marriage. He just barely accepts that. Uh, but yeah, I think it's a good fit. Uh, we gain a little bit of prestige from it. He gains a lot more. Uh, but yeah, very good fit, I feel. Uh, so let's go ahead and send off this this uh, proposal. And uh, our daughter will be betrothed. Uh, also, we can now pick a legacy, so we'll take a look at that. All right, so we got an alliance with the Hungarians. Uh, that's the one bad thing with that is it's just more allies calling us into wars we don't want to to be uh, a part of. So let's go ahead and go with the, the Guile choice. Uh, remember, Adam II will be continuing down Guile. Uh, and this will give us the hostile scheme success chance plus 10. All right, excellent. Also, uh, we have our, where is he, our rival up here. She is not quite of age. However, she's actually in our realm. You know what, we're gonna give her a gift. Give her a little money to already get her opinion increased. I think it's easier to gift characters, uh, or you get more opinion if they're, they're in your lands. Might be wrong about that though. Uh, and I did want to take a look at that succession law, because I think it's, yeah, Confederate. Confederate partition. Smallpox, a new day. The outbreak of smallpox, which has ravaged my court, is finally over. Of course, that's because we, we kicked him out. <laughs> it's victims of all either recovered or departed from this world. Uh, my court physician assures me that all bodies have been properly disposed of, and the threat is completely gone. We're safe because we sent them to lay on. All right, so I, I guess we're just waiting to, to get our troop numbers up a little bit higher, and then we're going to declare war. And we did achieve victory already, very quick conflict. Obviously we didn't help at all, so we didn't get anything from that. But yeah, she's increased her lands, our wife has. Fantastic, good job. Uh, so now uh, young Prince Adam will inherit even more lands. Okay, beautiful. Uh, when does our first daughter that we can actually pick an education for? So she's got another, another couple months. We do have a faction that has risen up, but it's incredibly weak, so not anything that we have to worry about. All right, so we, we are sitting on a ton of money. I don't even know what to do with all this money. Uh, again, I think we're just going to have to continue building up the fortifications uh, at this point. I think we're building that one right now. And yeah, we already are building here, aren't we? Yep. All right, so I guess we're building there, too. I just got a ton of ton of funds, man. Quite a bit of money. And we can also extort our subjects again, at least so desired. 
culture clash. Most of the commoners living in the earldom here are of Anglo-Saxon descent. Proud of their traditions, it does not sit well with them that they must serve a foreigner like myself. When their when their neighbor Earl Edith shares their culture and history, so this isn't this the one we just arrested and demanded his conversion? Yep. So he doesn't like us much. So we could give this this uh, county to him. Um, we wouldn't do that. Uh, we could take them. We can teach them the superiority of the English culture. This would gain us some stewardship, lifestyle experience, and a fifty percent chance that they might convert to English. There's also the fifty percent chance that they get the local traditions disrespected. And, of course, that he'll decrease his opinion even further us. I can say, I do not care if they keep their weird traditions. And then they'll get plus 20 opinion, but we won't be able to convert them. Or we say the peasants' feelings are irrelevant. I am the ruler. And then we'll gain prestige. I think we'd do this one. Yeah, and he's that, that type. So, uh, very arrogant. Uh, so let's go to this one. We'll see if it's a, a good one. It's not. All right, so they're kind of angry at us. So perhaps might end up having some kind of rebellion there. We're able to, to sway Duke Roger, which is fantastic because we're about to get a title for him. Again, just waiting for the numbers to get a little bit higher. Uh, but I would like to at least declare the war in this episode so it's it's started at the very least. Uh, in the name of the divine, following the death sentence of a lowly thief, I asked my nephew, Petty King George, what he thought. So this is, yeah, we've had this event. Uh, so right now he's cynical. Okay, well that's interesting. We haven't played as a cynical character. Again, we won't be playing as this character. Uh, and he's already betrothed as well. So we say, do not expect to see God's justice, and he'll keep the cynical trait. I don't think we would say that, though. Uh, he must be taught the proper execution of the law, or this is a lesson of moderation in all things. You know what? I don't really know that we would say any of these. But yeah, maybe we would say this one. We definitely wouldn't do that one. Yeah, I guess we'll do this one. We're getting a little bit of stress. He'll become just. Okay. A ransom offer. Here we go. Yeah, this one's actually offering us some, some damn money for once. It's 166. Uh, yeah, I guess we'll accept that. I think we could have got 300 from her, but that's fine. I'm okay with that. Uh, we still got a lot of prisoners in our dungeon, and our dread is getting a little bit low. Uh, might need to execute somebody. Let's take a look and see who we want to execute. So, we will get money for her. I'm looking for ones that we wouldn't get any money from. Yeah, perhaps her. Yeah, we'll get that 15 dread. Get us back up to almost 100 here. All right, excellent. So again, just waiting for those numbers to get a little, a little bit higher, because uh, he's actually got a decent sized army here. Uh, I would prefer to not have to, to buy mercenaries, though. I mean, we're just sitting on so much money, maybe we should, just because we haven't, I don't think we've hired mercenaries this entire series, maybe once, maybe one time, uh, but I don't recall doing it very often. Uh, we just haven't, haven't uh, needed to. Uh, we can now designate a guardian for our daughter, so maybe we'll do that here in a minute. Uh, it has become a habit to walk. Oh, okay, so, yeah. We've we've lost this. Uh, we had it once before. And it's taken a long time. Maybe the, the patch changed up my settings. Because uh, normally it doesn't take that long to, to fill that up. Might need to look at that. Uh, so, yeah, we lost that, and now we can get it back. Uh, it's a nice little health boost for having a dog. Super useful, the dog overall. Uh, so... Duke William was captured. Duke William in North Northumbria. Looks like he's got some type of rebellion happening up here. Okay. Uh, isn't that the title we just granted out? Yeah, that's the title we just granted out, and he's already sitting in a rebellion. Uh, what kind of war was this? Oh, damn it. So Duke Henry had his title taken already by her. So she's just going to get it right back. I am not okay with that. Absolutely not okay with that. Uh, let's see if we can't... She probably won't do this. Uh, um, yeah, uh, let's see if we can't stop her vassal war here. Let's go and stop the vassal war, send the demand before she can, hopefully before she can... There we go. Excellent. So we demanded a white piece, and we saved him, because she was about to take his title. Uh, so, I don't know if you get a, a bonus from that. You really should. Maybe, meh, maybe the Grateful. We might have got the Grateful. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, if we got that from it. We really should get a bonus if you help somebody. You save them when they're about to lose their title. Uh, what's happening here? We should really start taking a look at some of these uh, situations. Make sure that nothing crazy is happening. Uh, so I'm looking for the war here. Alright, so she's attacking him in a liberty conflict. Okay, well, we don't really care about the liberty conflicts. 
uh, through downcast lashes. As my eyes meet the Lady Anwills, uh, for what looks like the 20th time tonight, I know I'm not imagining things. Even from the other end of the table, her gaze feels as intense as the midday sun. She wants me, and I can feel my body responding, uh, awakening. But Lord Nicholas, her husband, and my cousin is also here tonight. Oh, we don't care. Yeah, I don't think we'd care about that much. We could say, I will find her once everyone is asleep. Everyone will know of her simple thoughts. Or know my heart remains pure. Again, we have a very you know, specific way of viewing, uh, you know, the, the, pi uh, the piousness. And so I don't think we're going to say any of these, even though that we have kind of moved to a more religious stance. We're going to give her a good tumble, as any good king should, I suppose. Afterward, Anwil falls to the mattress with a thump, her breath ragged and her eyes half closed. Languorously, I wipe the sweat off her chest or of her chest with gentle fingers. Merrily, a moment later, she pushes my hand away with an apolo apologetic smile. It is nearly morning. I better leave. Yeah, we'll say, indeed, you better leave. You better hurry. Excuse me. All right, so she's pleased with us. She enjoyed our casualness. She respected the fact that we, wouldn't, we didn't try and make anything of this. Uh, so I want to take a look and see if she has married yet. Not yet. Uh, they should have married, uh, but the betrothal hasn't happened. So we're still waiting on that. Uh, we did finish up the construction here. Excellent. So that allows us to, to go ahead and get this upgraded, and we'll go ahead and do that now. And maybe we'll do something here in Winchester. I think we'll go ahead and build this up. Again, we just have so much money. Sitting on a tons of funds. Okay. Oh, and it was discovered. <laughs> so we lost the level of devotion, unfortunately. Uh, yeah, that's kind of a bummer. I think that already happened, though. Yeah, it's already happened. Uh, we also have gained the adulterer trait. I think we already had that, though. Yeah, we already had that. And, of course, the Lord here is not going to respect that. He's not going to be happy about us sleeping with his wife. By the blood. And, yeah, we did lose another level of piety. It's not the first one that Adam II has lost from his uh, adulterous ways. Again, just waiting for these two to get married here. Oh, so he created his own branch. I suppose that's that's fitting uh, that he would create his own, own branch here since he has quite a bit of power on land. Uh, so, yeah, not, not surprising at all. So he's not in our house anymore. A uh, commoner of Norman heritage has been accosted in the streets of London over some minor offense. By making a statement in their defense, I could perhaps convince my spymaster Duke Roger that the equally Norman of my the equally Norman of my good character, but I might risk alienating my English peers. Okay, so those have to do with the fact that we got the Normans, so we're trying to to kind of help sway his opinion. We can say the Normans are good people. Uh, we'll spend 75 prestige, and uh, we'll actually take stress because we're arrogant. So yeah, we have to say this one: the English are a superior moral fiber. All right, so again, I was trying to get this up to 14,000, uh, but it's taken longer than expected. I don't think that there's any reason for us not to wait, though. I feel like uh, well, he married a, a dwarf. Okay, so that might... Is this a, a new wife? Oh, that might be his, his wife. So do, are all his children? No, they're not all uh, dwarfs, but one of his daughters is barren. Just seeing if they have any other... Uh, they didn't have any dwarf children. Okay. And this is his current heir. Getting stuck in. There was commotion among the children today. Runhild was attempting to preach among her fellow youngsters and became the target of a small fight. So the petty king George intervened and did what he could to protect her. Okay, so this would be his last trait, or is this a new trait? No, no, this is his last one. Uh, I thought he already had three. Uh, apparently not. So we can say, never back down from a challenge, George, and he will become brave. We can say, let me tell you how you could have mediated this, and they become calm. Or we can say, never let anyone spite the divine like that, and they become zealous. Yeah, I think we'll say this. Of course, Adam never backs down from a challenge. Or at least he hasn't yet. And may not be the bravest of characters, but not a coward either. He went out leading his men, thinking he was be great at it. Of course, he wasn't, but yeah, he didn't know any better. So yeah, we're just kind of letting this play. We're getting making some progress here. Uh, a lot of events that have been fired in this episode, so I haven't really made as much progress as I, I thought I would with, with this, as much as we've let, letting this go. Uh, we were able to sway Duke Roger again. Uh, Duke Roger, excuse me. Uh, but we're at 100, so there's really no reason to keep this going. So let's find somebody else to sway. 
Yeah, our spy master loves us. And remember, we're giving that title to him. We're going to take that uh, kingdom over for him, so... We want to have that high opinion. I'm just looking for other characters you might want to improve opinion with. Probably the Duchess here. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Uh, she is a bit older. Who's inheriting? Her sister is set to inherit everything. Okay. Maybe it's not worth it, uh, improving opinion with her. Yeah, I, I, I don't think so. I don't think it's really worth it. We could do the Chancellor instead. Why not? Let's go and sway him. Oh, wait a minute. No, no, no. She's got to be married, right? This is one of the things I was waiting on when trying to get this started here. You'd think that they've got to be married by this point. They're not. Like a whole year has gone by and they still haven't gotten married. That's really strange. I'm not entirely sure why that is. Hmm. Okay. Maybe he knows my plan. <laughs> I mean, I guess we could go ahead and do it now. There's no reason to wait. Yeah, I suppose before she was too young. Uh, we do have a hook on her as well. Let's go ahead and seduce her. 95% chance of success here. Right, excellent. Uh, let's see if there's anybody else we can get money from. Yep, we have one character here. This isn't the one that we're... Yeah, that's the one we're seducing right now. So she would pay us 61 gold. We're going to wait, though. All right. The Troublemaker. My vassal, Countess Vanilla, approaches me. Rage in her eyes and a dog. Okay, so we've seen this e event here. And we're going to say, he's just a dog. Stop flipping out, woman. All right. So again, just very good on money, prestige, everything. It's really just piety that we... You know, we don't gain very quickly. We gain it quite slowly indeed. Uh, but even that, we have 1,300 piety. It's pretty good in that regard. And what's this here? All right, so we do want to, to continue building here uh, now that we've gotten the smithy done. All right, so excellent. Uh, and you can upgrade that as well and get even better benefits here, as you can see. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to upgrade that. This is another event we've seen a couple times here. And as we're impatient, we have to do this one here. 66% chance that it will work. So we'll see. All right, guys, I think we're just going to do this war, man. Uh, he has a lot less troops than he did. Yeah, let's just go and declare war. All right, so again, we're going to be going not over our own claims, over Duke Roger's claims for the entire kingdom of France. It's going to be a lot of prestige, but we have it. Uh, so let's go ahead and, and declare war. He's got 9,100 troops total when you count his allies. We'll likely bring our own allies into this. This is going to be a big conflict. It will be next episode that we do the conflict, but we'll at least do the very basics here. Uh, so let's go ahead and get like our, our troops risen up. I don't know where our levy point is. The last time I declared war, you know, we had that alliance war where we helped our, our wife. Yeah, the last time we declared war was, was that uh, crusade. It was the last time we were involved in anything. So let's go ahead and, and get our allies brought in. Uh, we do need to get a guardian selected for her as well. Uh, so we'll do that. You know, we'll do that now because I'll forget. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that in this episode. So let's go ahead and also select her, her education focus. I haven't even looked at that yet. So she's pensive. Uh, so she would do good in either one of these two. Let's have her do. Let's have her do learning. So we'll have her do that. Uh, we still need to get a guardian for her, that's right. So let's go ahead and select a, a guardian for her. Uh, we'll base this off of uh, somebody who's got a very, very high learning. Could give her to Isabel, though, yeah. It's not great. <laughs> Maybe we should look at our, uh, and the reason why I say it's not great is because she's uh, she's gonna die soon, so we'll just have to, to find somebody else. Uh, so I think the better option would be to look at among our among our vassals and see if anybody has like a really high learning. So we have the Earl here, he doesn't like us, but I think we might do him. We could also do Duke Roger. Increase his opinion, Duke Rogers. Yeah, let's do Duke Roger. All right, so let's go to grant Duke Roger the guardianship. All right, so it'll be of Princess Ailey. And he will be the guardian. Uh, of course, he'll be Definitely be willing to accept that. It's going to improve his opinion as well. But she has a pretty low opinion of us, so that'd be helpful. All right, so uh, that's been taken care of. Let's see if there's anything else in here that we need to to deal with. Of course, we can call in our dynasty member, uh, but I don't know. Yeah, I don't know that we'd want to do that. It's too expensive. Uh, we'll just call in our, our allies. We have a lot of allies to call in. 
Uh, and they're calling us into all their goddamn wars, so we'll call them in uh, to ours. Now, the Hungarian vassal, I don't, I don't think we'll call... Yeah, I don't think we'll call the King of Hungary in, because that's really far away, and it's also not really necessary. Uh, we could not call her in, that's right, because she is uh, a vassal. Uh, we can't call her in either. We can call our wife, though. And they'll keep her out of conflict over here, so that's good. And we came up to, to all her war, so yeah, we'll call her in. And I almost want to call the Hungarians in. Um, I don't know how many troops they have. Let's just take a look. They got 6,800. That'd really helpful in getting the war done quickly. He could tack down here in the south while I did the north. I was trying not to pull him in because I was kind of worried, like if he was dealing with his own conflicts, uh, that it'd get him all distracted and stuff. But you know what? Let's let's call him in. You know he's gonna call us in. To all his damn wars. Uh, so yeah, we'll bring him into this conflict and look good to go. All right, so let's go and get our armies raised up now. Let's be several days. Just round it up here, and of course he did accept. And looks like he had his allies come in as well. All right, uh, so seven more days to get these rounded up. And so this is... Okay, so this worked out. She uh, thanks you for the gift of music. I greatly appreciate it. And we're a man of impeccable taste. All right, excellent. Uh, so our attempt to seduce her has gained the budding interest, increasing the success chance. We already had very high success chance. Anyways, uh, we get that done in eight months. I'm surprised she still hasn't married him. I don't know if he's just waiting for... <laughs> Because he knows what I'm about to do. He's ruining my plot, man. He's ruining my plans. Uh, we also finished construction here in London. So let's go ahead and get the next uh, upgrade going. Uh, so we did the levies before. We just got so much money. I guess we'll do... Let me see what these the next levels grant. So we get 0.5 gold there. It's not as much. Uh, this is probably also, yeah, just 0.5. I think this should give us a lot, yeah. I'll probably do that one. This one does increase, I, no, maybe not. I was gonna say it increases our bonuses down here. That's not the case though. Okay, uh, so in that case, let's go for the extra money. All right, excellent. So, we've got our armies uh, just about gathered up. There we go. And look at how much money we earn, despite the fact that we have this, this large army raised up here. Uh, they did attack us over here, okay. <laughs> Yeah, he was at sea. I suppose that makes sense that he would attack over here. Uh, so that's fine. Uh, we were definitely okay with that. What we'll do is we'll just pay to bring our troops across. Uh, now there's a lot of troops. Hmm. If he keeps them all together, it'd be kind of difficult to, to defeat him there. And then we'll just leave the other two uh, armies that we have, maybe even more, maybe it might be like three armies, and we'll have them just siege down provinces while his entire army is over here. Or a big chunk of his army. I'm just looking for other troops we might be able to see. No, I can't really see anything else here. Not yet, anyways. Uh, just looking at the total troop counts, guys. Uh, I don't know if he's hired any mercenaries, but we could hire some of our mercenaries of our own. And I think we might. Again, just because we haven't uh, hired any. One interesting thing that somebody noted uh, a couple videos ago is how much Emperor Adam looks like uh, the Burger King King. Uh, it looks just like him. Uh, so I kind of feel like Burger King might have designed their king after Emperor Adam, of course. Uh, he looks just like him, especially when he's younger. Uh, he's looking a little bit more raggedy now uh, in, his, in his 30s, but uh, in his 20s, he definitely looked like the Burger King, just like him. Uh, but anyways, uh, let's, let's go in and uh, look at the mercenaries. I think we'll hire some. Yeah, I think that'd be useful. Uh, just so we have more troops over here uh, to help fight. Uh, and we have so much money. Uh, there's really no reason not to. So I guess we'll base it off what he has here. Uh, so he currently has, let's just take a look. He currently has skirmishers and, yeah, cab units. Okay, so we either want spearmen or archers or both, preferably. It would be, be preferable to have both. We're not seeing the option to get both. So we should definitely make sure we have pikemen. So probably one of these two here would be the best options for us. Let's just take a look here and see what their commander traits are. All right, so he's reckless. He's a forest fighter and a reaver. He has slightly better martial though. 
Uh, as far as other traits go, he's brave, greedy, and just. Well, he is chaste, calm, and vengeful. I feel like we'll probably go for, for this guy here. I think he's the better option. Uh, so let's go and hire him for three years. 588 gold. Uh, oh, ah, oh, damn it. We rounded him up here. I didn't mean to round him up here. I meant to change that. Ah, damn it. All right, so we'll have to bring him across as well. So that's more gold. Luckily, we have a lot of money. Uh, so yeah, we'll be... Uh, Let's go ahead and get this, this set up. You know what? I'll do that next episode. Because uh, I, I don't have... I've already recorded longer than I planned to. This was supposed to be a much shorter episode. I really need to to, to work out today. It's, it's leg day. And I, I unfortunately have to <laughs> to get that leg day done. I've, I've skipped the last two leg days. So, like, I have to to work out today. It's it's. I try not to, to skip any workouts. But it's been really hectic lately. I'm trying to make it where I'm not coming out of the gym ridiculously late. Like I've been lately. Because it's just been... Again, just been so busy of those last couple weeks. So yeah, I gotta, I gotta go to the gym. Uh, so we're gonna go and end it here, guys. Uh, we'll, we'll do the war against uh, Leon, France, whatever you wanna call them. Uh, we'll do this this war against them next episode. Should be fun, it'll be a bigger conflict. Uh, again, we'll bring those mercenaries and our main army across so that we can defeat these, like, what is this, 8,000 men here? Uh, almost, yeah, close to 8,000 men. So we'll bring them across, we'll have to pay for them. That's, that's unfortunate, the rally point should have been moved so at least we wouldn't have had to pay for the mercenaries, but whatever, it is what it is, guys. While the rest of the troops then attempt to siege down his territory. Uh, so we'll do this war next episode, should be fun. Hope you guys did enjoy this one where I yeah, mainly uh, dealt with events, a lot of events. Uh, also, of course, dealing with all of our vassals and getting them all converted, that took quite a bit of time as well. Uh, and, you know, handing out titles. I feel like we got a lot done uh, in our realm. Things have changed quite a bit uh, with the layout, as you guys can already see here. And we finally dealt with these guys here, this uh, dynasty that has had too many titles for too many duchy titles for far too long. So I do hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. If you did, make sure you leave a like on the video, subscribe to our channel, hit that notification bell, and leave a comment. I do hope to see you guys on the next video, and thanks for watching.